Hey guys, this is Chris with Deb Coffee, and this is React 15 minutes at a time. So my friend Matthew asked me, what's this React thing that I hear about? He's an Angular guy, and he just kind of wanted to get the gist of it and see why it's valuable. So he went through the documentation and tried to do all the initial setup with Babel and Browserify and you know Webpack and all these different things just to get up and running. And he was getting frustrated. You know, he's not only learning React, he's learning all these tools just to build React. So I thought that I would make these quick videos just to show you how to get started and up and running with it without having all of that set up. You can do it very quickly and just see if React's something that you're interested in or if you can see yourself programming with it. So let's get started, guys. So if you guys want to navigate to CodePen.io, they describe themselves as the playground for the front end of the web. Um, it's very easy to get up and running with this, and we don't have to do any initial setup to start learning React. So click on New Pen. And over here, we're going to do a few settings before we start programming. So click on Settings, and we'll first click on uh, CSS, which I'm going to be using SCAS. You guys can leave the CSS as it is because we're not going to really be doing any CSS. And then we're going to go over here to JavaScript. Now change your preprocessor to Babel. And then you'll see this add external JavaScript, which I have the external JavaScript right over here that I'll have pasted down, down below. That way you guys can just paste it right here and then get up and running. This is just a CDN to get React into our application. So hit save and close, and that's all the setup we need to do. Something else I'm going to do is I'm going to be pasting some uh, a few styles that I had that I just went ahead and did just so it looks a little bit nicer. You guys don't have to do this. You could do your own styles if you wanted to, but just something that I wanted to do. So to get started, we have this split into two things. We have our HTML and we have our JavaScript, which is uh, being uh, pre-processed by Babel. So to create a React component, there's two different methods you have, or technically three, but two that we're going to cover. Is you can do this. You can make a variable followed by your component name, which we're going to be creating a profile. And you equal that to react.createClass. And that's going to set accept an object as its parameters. And you can start writing your React component in between here. That's one way. Or we can do it the new way, which is the ECMAScript 6 way, which is a uh, class with inheritance. So how we do that is class followed by your component name. And then we extend react.component. And then that will just be open and close curly braces. And then inside of here, we can start writing our React component. So we're going to do it the second way. That you know We want to keep up with the times and do it the most modern way possible. So we can start writing our React component right here. So one of the functions that you're going to need to return always if you want anything to be printed out inside of your React component is render. And again, guys, if you don't know ECMAScript 6 that well, it's pretty easy. Just um, know that I'm going to be using ECMAScript 6 for most of this. So this is the render function or method that we have here. And render returns HTML. This is where you're going to be writing your view for your React component right here. So you would type in something like returns, and then you can write HTML directly inside of your component. So I'm just going to do an h2 tag, and we'll put hello world, simple hello world. Just to run you guys through, we have a method render, which renders out and accepts a return of some type of HTML. And you might notice we don't have anything printed to the screen. What we want to do is we want to create a container div, and we'll give that an ID of app. And now we need something which is known as React DOM to basically say, hey, take my component and basically render it on to that div we just created. So to do that, it's very simple. You do react.render, and then the first argument here is your component. Now this can be some type of HTML, so let's say I wanted to just write HTML here. It doesn't have to be a React component, but in our case it will be. So our React component will be written like this. Just like a self-closing tag in HTML, this is our React component right there. Now our second parameter is the container we want to attach it to. So we'll get that by ID, so document.get element by ID, and then pass in the name of it. And you'll see here, it should appear. There we go, we got our hello world. We have our React component 
right there on the screen. So congratulations, you guys wrote your first React component. So next, what we're gonna have to do is, let's say we wanted to write more than one line. Well, if I do something like this, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work for two reasons. You'll see here that I'll say something like, yeah, pretty much it needs to be wrapped inside of a closing tag. If you want to write multiple lines of HTML inside your React component, which chances are you are going to want to, you have to open it with these parentheses. Now, this parentheses pretty much says, hey, you can write any, you know, any uh, kind of HTML you want to in there. So instead of just doing one line, we're going to want to do multiple lines. And we'll paste this here. And we'll see there's still an issue. This issue, again, is the enclosing tag. Well, you always have to have one parent tag inside of your React component. So I would have to make a wrapper div right here that contains all of the HTML in there. So there can only be one parent HTML tag. And we'll see now that it works fine. It's perfectly fine with that. Cool. Um, but, you know, we kind of want to make this into a profile. Um, you might be asking, how do we pass data into our component? Well, we're going to be using something called props. What props does is it accepts a key and a value, and then we can start using it inside of our component. So here we could actually pass in values into our component. So let's say we want to add, pass in a, a name value, and this is similar to just attributes inside of, uh, inside of um, HTML. And we'll say Chris Pena. And then the next thing we're going to want is the age. Now we could put this into a string, right? And that would be fine, but we want to put this as a number. We want to put age as a number. Um, so you might be asking yourselves, how do we put JavaScript into there? Well, if you want to start typing JavaScript, you're going to want to put an open and closing curly bra braces. This pretty much says, hey, anything inside of here is JavaScript. So I could you know, write like any type of JavaScript function here, but what we're going to want to pass is a data type. So you could pass in a true or 24 or an object with, you know, a, a name and, you know, or an array. You can pass in any data type here, but what we're going to pass in is my age. And then the last thing we're going to have is a bio, which is, I like puppies. Perfect. So we have these three values which is basic information that we're going to need for our profile. But where is this at? Well, where this is at is on our component, actually. So let's console.log this. So we're going to console.log our component, and we'll see all the properties with our, uh, with our component. Over here, we got a few errors that we had earlier. And we'll see we have this profile component. And then we have props. Props is what I was telling you about. This is going to get, these values are going to get passed to the props as an object. And we'll see age right there, our bio, and our name. So if I did something like this, dot props dot name, and this will rerun automatically in CodePen. We'll see Chris Pena, age, it should be a number 24, and then bio, I like puppies. I really do like puppies, they're pretty cool. Okay, so let's start, let's go ahead and get these values inside there. We'll make another line. For this h4 there we go and like we said we can write JavaScript inside of our HTML because this won't work let's say name this is gonna read this as uh, you know a regular string inside of our HTML how we want to do this is we want to wrap it inside of those curly braces that way it'll render it out as HTML and we'll just copy this down and change this to age and then bio and then we'll just make it look a little bit nice by giving it a little bit of a label okay cool so this should work perfectly fine we got all the information we need um, I actually have um, the CSS class and I'll show this to you this is again just normal CSS uh, called profile box, which makes it, you know, look, give it a little bit of a drop shadow and a color, just to make it look like a profile. Um, you might be familiar with making a class in CSS just like this. And technically, if this was HTML, this would 100% work, but it isn't. It's 
uh, JSX, which is the uh, markup for React. Um, this reads this class, since this is also JavaScript, as a class like this. In order to say, hey, this is a CSS class, we do class name in camel case. And there we go. We'll see we have our class. So anytime you guys are doing any CSS class, make sure that you have class name instead of class. And we're good to go. Now this is all fine and dandy, but you'll see here that we're repeating ourselves. We're saying this dot props, this dot props, this dot props. Well, we can actually use something that's in ECMAScript 6 to pull out those values, which is known as de destructing, I believe. So over here, we'll make a variable and we'll give it an empty object or empty object initially. And now we'll take out the name, the age, the bio, and we'll set that equal to this dot props. And again, what destructing does is it goes and it finds that object and it pulls out all those value properties. So now instead of doing this dot props, I can do this just name, age, and then bio. And that works perfectly fine. Uh, let's say we wanted to do something more dynamic. We want to utilize the reactive aspect of React. Over here, I have a picture. It's a pretty accurate picture of me. I'll just copy this and add this to our props. So pick is equal to this. And then we'll take our pick value over here. Because again, look, I can show it to you real quick. If I do this uh, props uh, pick should be a URL string right there. And then I'll just go ahead and take that pick value out. And we'll see, that's perfectly fine. Same thing. Now what we're gonna do is an image. Give it the source of that pick that we just did. And that's pretty big, so we'll give it a height of 100. Okay, good. Now we have our picture on there. That's a pretty accurate picture of me during Cinco de Mayo. Um, let's say we wanted two buttons, one button to make the picture bigger and one to make it smaller. Um, you might be asking yourselves, where do we put that function? Where do we put that method? Well, like we said, render is a method. Well, we can add uh, new types of methods that we define on our component. So let's make a method called zoom pick in, and then we'll make another one called zoom pick out. And these are two methods that we have on our component. We probably need two buttons, so let's make a button that is minus, and then a button that is plus. Okay, we'll wait for this to render out. And it looks like there is an issue. Okay, yeah. So button, uh, okay, yeah, I have an extra T there. It's fine. Okay, and we'll put a break, again, just to make it look a little bit nicer. There we go. So we got these two buttons and they're not doing anything. What we want them to do is we want to increase the size of our picture. Um, first and foremost, we probably should give these, uh, these methods right here, uh, you know, get them attached to our buttons. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just do a console.log this. So it'll, all it'll do is just console.log this whenever we click the button. And let's do that. So on click, and again, this is camel case, we're going to add our methods. Now you might think that you would do it like this, just zoom pick in. But since zoom pick in is looking for a variable on this render method, you have to reference this. You have to reference our component so it can find it. So this dot zoom pick in, and then I'll copy this over. Or actually, this is zoom pick out. And this one's zoom pick in. But you'll notice something. If I go over here and inspect, and this is gonna be a little bit hard to see this. And I'll just clear this up. If I click this, it's saying undefined. It doesn't know what this is. It's looking for this inside of, uh, inside of our uh, method rather than on the component. Now to fix this, we'll want to do dot bind this. So we're binding it to our component. So now if I click the plus or the minus sign over here, you'll see that it's referencing 
the this, and this one's still not, so let's go ahead and fix that as well. We're doing bind to this. So now that we have our buttons bound to this, which is our component, what we can do now is dynamically change the height of our picture. Uh, something we could do is we could use jQuery, but we don't want to do it that way. We want to do it the React way. And something that will be really useful here is something known as state. So there are props and state. What state does is it, it determines the state of your component. So if that changes, if your state changes, it re-renders a portion of your component that is relevant to the state. Let's go ahead and define our first state. Again, we're using the constructor, which is new to ECMAScript 6. So constructor. And this constructor will accept a property called props. And over here, we're going to do a super, which just pretty much inherits the parent, the, the parent object's uh, properties, which is props. And now we can write our state. So here, we're going to want to do this.state is equal to an object. Okay, and this object is where we're going to start defining different uh, different state attributes. So we'll give it height, which is uh, initially 100. So instead of us hard coding 100 in here, we can do this dot state dot height, and you'll see it'll be the exact same. It just refreshed and did the exact same thing, and we can do our destructing here of our state. So we put height is equal to this dot props. And we'll just pop, we'll just go ahead and get rid of this dot state. Same thing. Or sorry, this dot state is what I need to change that to. Perfect. So inside of our functions, we're gonna want to mutate our state. You're gonna hear the term mutate, which just means change. So we're gonna mutate our state by doing a function that's on our component. So this dot set state and then in here, it's going to accept an object. In this object, we're going, to, we're going to target our height that we have right there. And just do height. And then the next thing is our new value, which what we're going to want to do is this.state.height plus 20. So we're just going to be adding 20 to our, our current height. Then over here on the zoom out function, we're going to want to minus 20. And again, let me just run you through what should happen is we have an order of operations here. We have our height that's bound to this state and this state is getting changed by these buttons depending on which one's clicked. So if I click this, this should increase our image size, which it does. Perfect. And I could change this to something like 100 and then uh, this could also be 100. You know, we can change this super easy. And then right here, it's gonna make the picture really big and then minus it. So guys, that sh pretty much should cover it. I think this video went a little bit longer than I expected, but um, hopefully you understand the basics. And I have another video coming out shortly if you guys need it. Um, I think this should cover the basics of it and, and what we wanted to achieve. And until next time, guys, I'm Chris Pena from Dev Coffee, and I like the salsa.